August 8, 2019. This is the Northampton Council on Aging. And um, if anybody has their cell phones, could you silence them? We are being taped, and if anybody is taping us, we'd like to know if you're taping us as well. And, um, so we have one person from the public, and so sir, um, if you if you would like to speak to us, you can do that now. Just identify yourself, and then we won't be responding to you. We'll take whatever you have to say under advisement. What my name? If, if you're going to speak. No. no. Thank you. All right. So I hope everybody reviewed the minutes. Does mm -hmm. anybody have any changes to last month's minutes? July 11th. Yes. yes. Uh, I would just delete Mary as the excuse because unfortunately she has passed away. No, she's not has yet. not for the last meeting, but oh, no, no, no. after just last. Oh, it was after. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, never mind. <laughs> Anybody else have anything they wanted to add or delete on the minutes? Okay. So hearing none, I'd like to uh, hear a motion to accept the minutes. So moved by Cindy, seconded by me. Donna. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And abstained. Okay, so the minutes passed as written. So Dennis beat us to it on the announcement, but we did we did hear of the passing of Mary, and I know that Mary was on the board for quite some time before she became ill and was excused most of the time that this board has been in, in session. Did you yeah. want to say anything about how long? Or how? I don't actually have an exact date of how long Mary's been at least on the board yeah. on the council. Okay, Kathy. I mean, I mean uh, she. I mean, she joined obviously after me, but she was on for maybe like to like maybe five years or so, but before that she volunteered here many, many, yes. many hours. Right. That was written up in, in the newspaper yeah, that she yeah, got the volunteer yeah. award of having the most hours yeah. volunteered. But even before well, they these two years that I knew so even before then, I mean even before I mean yeah. it's been a long time. Yes. Yeah. She will be missed. Yeah. And I don't know if it's now to ask you because I've been people have been asking about some way of commemoration, and um, I know that um, you know you are your favorite, but her time and and you know she was fair to everybody and a lot of people. It, it's it's interesting to hear the tributes of people. Everybody who kind of comes to talk about who she was and what she did are are like really. Um, they really moved and people you know, they took her her cards with her um you know people that i wouldn't even think of that had kind of her weight they had uh, pictures and a little prayer in the back people said that's on my on my refrigerator you know people really it really meant a lot she meant a lot to a lot of people so i think we're going to let the tribute go for the people that did that honor her at you know we're not doing anything in particular as a council. Mm -hmm. but we certainly honor her service, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, introduction of Jay. So I, we're introducing Jay um, Casella, our new volunteer program, program coordinator and assistant director. We're really Hi. glad to have Jay here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Um, Thank you. We're happy to have you. <laughs> we started just this week. I started actually Friday of last week, and then so, so far so good. You're still here. Mm -hmm. Loving it so far. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Very busy. Coming up to speed. Okay. Old business. Anybody have some old business they want to talk about? New business. Didn't, I didn't really get any any um, yeah. suggestions for new business. Um, it's August. It's <laughs> August. Um, the yes. tables and chairs look really cool. So the umbrellas, I like the mm -hmm. colors. Yeah, we have more coming. We just don't have the um, cord yet to launch mm -hmm. that. But. 
So how many are they going to be all together? There'll be four tables and three umbrellas. Oh, nice. Yeah. Also going to be right here. And 16 chairs. Are people using it? Not, not so much yet. Um, when does it get cooler? It's been pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but you know, because it's mobile, we can really we can set it up anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to um, mm -hmm. use it for different events and things outside. So. But I think it also just makes oh, it yeah. look more inviting. It does. And I sat in them. And they're comfortable? And they're actually, it is comfortable. Because when you see metal, it's like, oh, but I, you know, the AM do the handles because of my back. It was like, oh, easy to get out it was easy to get out of. Good. The tables are actually not tippy mm -hmm. and so light. I mean, they, they're sturdy so that if you lean a little bit on them. So I think they're great. Yeah. Just don't leave them in the sun. They can get yeah, well, here we go. metal, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's go on to the director's report since you've well covered started. Started. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to cover that in the director's appointment. Yeah. Report. Um, well, so we we've um, we now have a uh, full-time custodian who is still training, but will have um, be shifting over to a schedule of uh, two to ten, and will be um, overseeing building use outside of our regular hours um, and we have a new staff assistant um, named Nate and we have Jay and Nancy who is pretty new is on vacation right now um, and so we're almost at full staffing <laughs> um, and then upcoming programs um, I think it was this Tuesday night we had the landscape redesign workshop, which was sort of phase one um, with the Conway School of Design, and we had about um, 20 people here. Um, and in terms of looking at and informing how the redesign of the rain garden in the back will happen, so that it's more pollinator friendly than it is right now, and that it's more that it's easier for the city to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next phase will be having input um, around uses of other green space around the building, including that green space there for activities and seating. And um, so we're sort of doing it in stages. Um, so that was nice to have a good turnout for that. Um, and I don't know if people have noticed or come to the farmer's market that's going on here on Wednesdays, but that's been a big success. And the cooking club has also been a really big success. And so um, people are coming to the cooking club and helping cook um, food from farm vegetables from Crimson Clover. And um, we're then selling the product that is made at the farmer's market. And people are really enjoying that. And then also that same food is being sampled at all the other places where the mar neighborhood markets are happening. So mm -hmm. people are also hearing about our cooking club and our market through that um, out, kind of outreach and collaboration with Grow Food Northampton. How many people are, are, uh, have a cooking club? How do you define I think success? it's varied. But okay. it, there's a limit of eight. It's okay, right. so people can come and go and if they want one class or not. Or they have to attend all of them. Oh, no, there's no requirement. Okay. It's it's free to people who are getting the subsidized farm share, and it's $10 for people who um, aren't getting a subsidized mm -hmm. farm share. So people who want to learn how to cook with vegetables that are being sold. Okay. Um, but some really nice stuff's going out and I think people are really enjoying have some, having yes. some prepared healthy food to purchase. Um, and um, in September we have um, a Shakespeare workshop happening. Um, we will be having um, a bunch of new programming um, coming. Um, there's a new lesbian support discussion group happening that's sort of 
came out of the group of people from the LGBTQ luncheon mm -hmm. who got together to start a group. So there's you know a lot of spin-offs from different things that are happening, which is really exciting. Um, and we're in the process of planning a an intergenerational event that will happen on a Saturday for um, grandparents to have activities, and this is a collaboration um, with the school departments, um, early uh, early childhood program, where there will be some activities for younger kids and their grandparents, and older kids and their grandparents, um, or their surrogate grandparents. Um, so, um, and then the age friendly. Do you, I don't know. If, um, so, do you want to sort of do an update on? On that, I'm going to give that book to Jerry and Michael, who were also there. Um, I think we had about 50 people. It was a good crowd last week, and um, a, none of the same people from previous sessions. So it's yet another group of new people. And I think again, a pretty good cross. I'm looking to you guys to pretty good cross of ages. It wasn't just all young or all older. It was a nice mix and a nice mix of some. Um, the woman who's a head librarian Forbes was here. We had some of the staff of the Y. So we had a mix of, you know, us kind of people and then people who were here because they have a, a work interest. And um, I think we had some of the same themes of housing and transportation they got from the first and what makes this a nice place, you know, physically parks and open space and friendly people. And the thing that I was struck by was the comment from the woman at the Y towards the end when she she said, I'm really concerned and how do we how do we help bring along the people who are what did she say, ten or fifteen years from now are going to be the decision makers. She said the kids who come in who won't look you in the eye. And she just went to this litany of obviously what she's experiencing at, at the Y itself. And how do we get those guys involved? And sir, it stuck with me. She thought right. That the, you know, we're all here making, planning, deciding, um, but we're not going to be in those seats another 10 or 15 years. Yeah, and I think that that's an important in my sense in terms of what age-friendly and the work of age and dementia-friendly Northampton is about is to really to kind of, what is it, like age-strong, like building. Absolutely, and we did, I think, the center mm -hmm. when she the question, that we'll be following up with you and get involved. Mm -hmm. This was a really, it was, and that's the point that was new, that had not been made in previous yeah. session. And it's an incredibly important. Jerry, no, anything else came up? There was a, a professor, a new professor from UMass, right? Yeah. And she she asked me for my my name and my phone number. She would like me to come and speak to her younger people. She's teaching people, you know, teaching young people to to understand and respect yeah. and uh, psychology. Yeah. 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 Psychology. So, that's that Susan Krause. Uh, no, her name's not Susan. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, totally, they came totally new to us, I think. Yeah. Great. Good. So that was pretty good. Michael, anything from your table? That the only other thing that I recall, which I haven't mentioned, is uh, someone raised the issue of reframing the um, way we think about and talk about mm -hmm. seniors and mm -hmm. age and mm -hmm. so forth. And that seemed to strike a chord. Folks really seemed interested in mm -hmm. thinking through new ways of just conceptualizing and mm -hmm. talking about seniors and aging. So mm -hmm. we did, I think, suggest that we're going to look a little bit at uh, what can be done for that end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think so. Mm -hmm. and, um, Kathy and I, when we went to the Age and Dementia, mm -hmm. the, the Livable Communities Workshop mm -hmm. kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sponsor, right. there was a whole presentation on that very same thing. Right. I think I actually yeah. even had a copy of the slide deck, exactly. but it was about words, yeah. quote right. unquote, word, how, right. how words matter. Right. And attitudes in terms of And that. even uh, Boston, one of the things that they, their age friendly is not, it's age strong. Mm -hmm. you know, well, they stopped calling themselves the Council on Aging. They still have age friendly, but age yeah. strong is the name of the organization yeah. exactly. as opposed to a Council on Aging. Right, right. Or a senior center. Yeah. Called, mm -hmm. yeah. Boston Age Strong. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Andrea Burns, who's their director, was this willing to meet with us. Um, She's the age friendly person. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we'll work out some way to either have a um, go to meeting or something with people who are interested in meeting with her and Amy, who's her dementia friendly person. So we had to, so we got some good input and uh, you know similarities and then mm -hmm. differences, which is what good. which is terrific. So it's not just same old same old. So it was really with doing interesting was 
at my table they wanted age-friendly housing without young people, and another table they wanted to wig up with young people. So there was really the, you know, the uh, the mirror in, or the opposites, which was interesting. Well, which is this, it reinforces the need to have options, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same point, but yeah. options. There was a broad range of ideas and discussions around age-friendly, mm. much less around dementia-friendly, mm. probably because of the lack of experience some people had with it. So we might want to. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we could talk about it. Yeah. More, more discussion. More focus and discussion. Like great. I said, there were very different um, left age levels of people there, mm -hmm. which was really, really nice. This, great. this is trivial in a way, but the food was good, and people enjoyed it, and it sort of okay. made them feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, they really enjoyed the wraps and the things. And yeah. Oh, so you had good food. Well, you know, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought he was, I we going to, you know, punch your cookies. I know, there's and like he made sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. And folks enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. I don't think, I don't think they went to waste at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, and nice. people were very willing to talk, which I thought, I thought I was going to have to stimulate the group that oh, I, no. that I oh. know. Not at all. Yeah. They were. They were there and ready to share, which was very, very nice. It was yeah. easy to facilitate. We just wanted to come out on a mm -hmm. Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, and yeah. most people's mm -hmm. dinner time. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was well, well worth it. And I think one of the things I think we may have talked about this last month is we're going to continue to, to get input like this, because it's it helps to talk about Informed. how to get input, and it also yeah. helps to publicize what we're talking about, what we're doing, what we're wanting to do, and get more people involved. And we're also really going to start, I think, Next month, looking at um, an initiative that Boston has and other communities mm -hmm. for age-friendly businesses, mm -hmm. and really begin to mm -hmm. just you know get input and then do something so we can get some visibility mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. And there is a whole checklist and basically ways that a business wants to ensure that they're friendly to mm -hmm. older customers, customers with dementia, mm -hmm. um, and get a little on um, an age-friendly business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also the other piece is that the EARN initiative here um, is going to be part, you know, they're they're involved mm -hmm. at, in the age-friendly planning also, but that they're going to be working on the other side also, which is to inform businesses about how to be an age-friendly employer mm -hmm. and to be an age-friendly business in that most, a lot of their customers are gonna be older. Mm -hmm. But they they are going to need to be aware of how um, that they can actually benefit from hiring older workers um, and educating their other employees about being age friendly in their customer service. Mm -hmm. so. And there were people from out of town at my group, which I thought they used the senior center, so that's why they came. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this is really interesting. But let's mm -hmm. talk about Northampton. We kept it away from and how was that for you in terms of the group management? You know, yeah, I mean, they, they knew that they were there. I mean, I explained it that we were mm -hmm. talking about Northampton, right. and they both u utilized it. And right. the other thing was, I mean, I did have a couple of you know grumpies there that wanted to talk about the bad things, and I, I didn't let it go there. But they, you know, they wanted to do the complaints, and I'm like, no, no, that's not what we're here for. And, and they also, some people wanted to know, like, what's the time frame? And I'm like, well, this is our, you know, just a listening group and getting ideas. There's no time frame as to when that's going to happen, you know, so. Mm -hmm. It's okay. interesting. Um, there's been sessions here on jobs and employment for seniors. Have any of the local businesses yeah. really come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's been a yeah. lot of local businesses. So we already have seats to oh, go yeah. back and look at for uh, having being an age-friendly business. Yeah, I mean, I think those businesses were interested in having older workers because they had jobs that they thought would be good for older workers. But I, I think we'll we'll be looking at um, working with the Chamber of Commerce and and getting information out to all the businesses. Right, it might not be a bad place to start. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think the other thing is we could do some brainstorming around this table about targeting businesses that we know are where a lot of people, 60, 55 mm -hmm. plus, are mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. 
you know, right. and businesses talk about restaurants too, so it's right. not just, you know, like typical. Well, the places I think about is like McDonald's. Does McDonald's friendly Things like that that yeah. a lot of people, you know, would bring. Oh, not just the typical sushi in the places. I, I'm sorry if I don't, I, I, I should probably know more about this, um, but I'm just wondering in terms of um, next steps and in terms of, so there's like a, a committee and then is this like a monthly? Mm -hmm. Like what are like like it sounds like you got a lot of ideas there. Then what what happens with those ideas next? And like what what sort of how does it all work? So <laughs> all ideas. So we we're looking at a multi-year planning for having okay. and a, it's it's sort of a it's an interesting almost backwards way to approach. You get designated as an age-friendly community, community right. then you start doing the planning. Right. Okay. Versus the other way around. So part of this is to get input. What are the priorities that we're looking at? What will make Northampton an even better place to age? And I say even better because I think we all agree that, you know, not too shabby right now. And so part of that is getting input, and I think we want to target, we want to start going places. I think we, we're not, you know, people for whom it's difficult to get out are obviously not people who just had any of these listening sessions. So how do we partner with VNA and others and phone calls just to get input? And I think we've come to the recognition that while we're doing all that planning, the low-hanging fruit is something like an age-friendly business program mm -hmm. sort of can help promote the fact that we're wanting to be age-friendly and actually start doing something. And it's also a way to get many more people involved because part of the age-friendly best business is if you raised your hand for your business, a volunteer would come and talk to you. So it's a way to get more people engaged in our efforts. So it's sort of building a plane and flying at the same right. time kind of thing, but also the, a plan that will, what do we do? Housing and transportation, so we all know if that's different, so what's that really mean? Mm. And the we mm. being? The city, I mean, this is this is a citywide effort. The designation is made based on application that, that we wrote and the mayor submitted. Right, so but I think you're, you're also asking about who who is who is they Right and where, when do they meet yeah. and how do they meet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, I mean that's so, one of the questions. So it is. originated at, it's as a senior center right. initiative, a senior services department initiative. Um, the mayor has signed on. It is made the committee the steering committee is made up of um, patrons, some patrons, some board members or council members, um, and. And it's city, one, so, so some community members, some members from this board. Well, some of them. Yeah, I mean, Linda Desmond, the previous director here, um, is coming to the steering committee meetings. Okay. Um, Kathy Service, um, Adrian, Adrian um, Andrews, Andrews um, Deborah Epstein. It's pretty much about we. Uh, yeah. If you're really. Uh, actually, I come to. And what, of course, and, and right. So it's it's, but it but that doesn't mean that they hold that that group holds all. The, it's just sort of they yeah. they're they're branching at holding the the topic and the initiative, but really as groups, working groups form around each of the mm -hmm. topics of that mm -hmm. we decide we're going to prioritize then. We're, you know, there will be ways for everybody to get involved um, in the thing that really that they're passionate about being involved in. So, right, right, okay. I mean, so it's really a community. Yeah. Got it's got to keep the engine moving, yeah. I think. And so, and so, in terms of the role of the board, it is to support mm -hmm. the steering committee. Mm -hmm. um, and you <coughs> engage in any way you might want. Right, sure, as individuals. Mm -hmm. but I, yeah. make sure I mean, I, you, know, you can go to ARP. There's enough, right. a lot of th things that are just like a general through, so it might be easier to go and read it. And I think, and both, particularly the, this time, we had sign-in sheets at the tables, and there was a way, and I haven't looked at them yet, for people to say if you want to get more involved. Right. So as a way to not just come in, right, but a way, you know, come on down and help us. So I, I was, I think we all were really pleased that they turn out last well, year. Yeah. So how did it compare to the first one? I think there were more. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. And I'm just, I'm just, I didn't do a head count, but I'm just looking from the way the room looked. Okay, great. great. I kind of did. I did you know there were 36 people there? There were okay. six tables of six people. Okay, it seemed more kind of, that's the rest of I mean, approximately. Mm -hmm. So, okay. no, I, I, was, I was counting, and it was interesting that the tables were kind of in 
the numbers were evenly distributed across yeah, well, the Yeah, no, 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 that happened. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, you can't sit over there by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> One of the questions that I thought was really effective was, it came second, but it asked people, what has changed for the better in the last five to ten years here in Northampton? So that was nice to hear people talk about that, like the bicycles, for instance, mm -hmm. the bike path. And the senior center. Came up and the senior center, yeah. yeah. So the that people, program, yeah. you know, there has been progress made, and I think that was an important question because it's not like everything's been stagnant here yeah. for the last five oh, to right. ten years. So it was a good question. Right, so I, think, I think the whole point is building on where we are and what are the, what's going to make it even better. Yeah. Okay, great. Anything else, Mary? Yeah. Did you say? I did. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's everything um, that I have right now. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask that. Do you need my name, Dan Fitzgerald? I was just wondering, has there been any analysis of the demographics of Northampton? What percent of people are in those, you know, 40 to 50, 40 to 49, 50 to 59 age groups that now versus in the past and so on, so that we could see shifts in population? And, yeah. So the Tufts Foundation has a whole demographic profile on every community, and you can look at that online, um, and Northampton's on there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mass, mass healthy aging. Is the, is the site, masshealthyaging.com. I don't think it does a comparison, though. So it'll give you what every year they stats you from, but it doesn't do it. I don't believe it has a relative comparison. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty comprehensive. The age, the health, it's a lot of information. Thank you. Okay. And we can, um, I can get that to you, and you can put it in the minutes. For sure. everyone around the table who might want to, who might be curious, also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else that people want me to bring up? Quiet things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've I haven't thrown away the key, but I have decided. <laughs> okay. Next month, the meeting is September twelfth. I have jury duty that day, so I'm, I'm giving you a warning that you might be leading the meeting next Fair week. warning. If, they're, if they seat me, I, they haven't yeah. done that yet, but you never know. But that's my day of report, so. Um, right, I guess that was the quickest wow. meeting. Oh, sorry, John. I would like the landscape people to do something about the trees at the front of the senior center who really um, have been sort of sad. They're, they don't take care of them. You should come to one of the workshops where we discuss that so you, that I can relay mm -hmm. that information. This the front? The yeah. street. Oh, oh okay. The one that's actually on the street, not the entrance. It's actually the city issue, not the city issue, but it's not senior center. Yeah, I mean, there is a limit to how much um, the city will, you know, I mean, I think that everything's up for discussion, but um, but I didn't, you know, I would have to talk to the tree warden and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but I think that um, we certainly can discuss any kind of ideas that come up. Also, there, there's a seamstress lady who would like to provide uh, services in Northampton, and um, she's a senior citizen, I think, and uh, an immigrant who's arrived in this country. She's been here quite a while, but she, she originally came from somewhere else, and she's working very hard, and she would really like to be helpful to us. Other people I know have been concerned about the, the need for a, a seamstress. She's a very nice lady. Oh, okay. Well, we, we can we can um, discuss how that would have to happen if it was it would probably have to happen on site. Well, I mean, I think you know yeah. how what does that mean in terms of money? If it's a business and blah blah blah, that's, that's important to think. About. Right. I mean, we have to be we yeah, have an individual's business. Yeah. Well, she, she is uh, doing this at the East Hampton Senior Center, so they must have worked out the, the okay. uh, tangles of involvement. 
something like that. Right, yeah, so I mean, it would, there's always sort of, we have to be aware of liability issues and procurement issues and um, conflict of interest issues. So I always, if it's on site and, and it's, it all checks out in terms of how we're operating it, then it could happen. You mean she actually sews and then on site? Yes. At East Hampton? Yes. I have used the service there. And you're very well attired. <laughs> <laughs> my father is contact Highland Valley Elder. Yes. They have a list of mm -hmm. suggestions yes. for like home care people. Right. So that's right. kind of an, and they don't, they can't um, recommend them, but they can suggest mm -hmm. that they can give, they give out lists of people that would might do home care for you, but mm -hmm. they can't. They, um, they don't endorse it. Endorse it. it. Yeah. So that might be, so the, we would be liable for her work if she was, Working from the well, senior so I have so yeah, I have to check with the city department that oversees these things with with each thing that we initiate here to make mm -hmm. sure that we're doing it properly. And you know, I get calls all the time from people who say they want something specific to happen here, and they know someone who can do it. And we have to actually um, we have to make things public in a way that makes it fair mm -hmm. and. Um, that there's transparency and that an opportunity is available to made available to other like people. So, um, but if it's a volunteer, then that's different. Dennis, I, I would just say, as piggybacking on that, if East Hampton Senior Center has sort of worked it out. But well, we don't know that. Yeah, so I, I, apparently, yeah. just sort of said that would be own. another resource. Yeah, it's certainly a resource, but it, right. that's all I'm going to say. It isn't worked out. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. No, it's possible yeah. it wasn't, right? No, yeah. I'm a lot of smaller communities don't have um, a city solicitor. They don't have people to check. They don't. They they may not be following all the same guidelines that our city requires. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, worth, it's worth checking out to mm -hmm. see whether it's mm -hmm. doable. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, That's all I really know. Or they've, they've done, done it. I mm -hmm. sent in the report to, to you through the office. I don't know what happened to it. Okay. Well, I'm so um, this is something we could talk with our program coordinator about. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing, Donna, make a suggestion for North Hampton neighbors. She could put out something in the neighbors. You know, that might be some place for her to kind of guard. You know, they have a big wide, you know, and that would be really absolutely helpful too. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it comes up a lot that people who have a specific skill and they have a business, yeah. like they can't, they can't promote their business in their role here as a volunteer because that, mm -hmm. that is a conflict of interest. And so, you know, a lot of times things make perfect sense in, in very casual ways or like friendly, you know, it's just we're being friendly or helpful, but like actually it can be construed as someone taking advantage of their position or their um, situation to benefit. And so um, we always have to think about all the ways it could be perceived or it could be um, come back as a conflict of interest. So. It's not that we want to prohibit meeting needs. It just has to be done correctly. It has to be done correctly, yeah. But Donna, I love her name. <laughs> okay. So if I don't, if there's nothing else that anybody needs to bring up, then I think we can adjourn. So we need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, service and who second, Michael? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain?